Hello YouTubers, it's Dansky and in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to create guides for responsive design in Adobe XD. Now as you can see I've got the starting window up, I'm just going to click on web 1920 in width by 1080 high. So let's click that to create a new document. Now as far as I'm aware in the current preview build of Adobe XD you can't create guides or anything like that so we're gonna to have to do this a slightly different way if I'm wrong in saying that and you can create guides please feel free to let me know in the comments below that would be awesome okay so we've got our document now the first thing I'm going to do is select the rectangle tool and just drag to create a four-sided shape anywhere on the artboard now I'm going to set the width of this to 1170 pixels wide and then 1080 high to match the height of the document. Now Adobe XD is very good in that it will snap, as you can see here, certain elements together. And we can just drag this one across and you should see, there we go, that it snaps right in the middle. So we can quickly and easily drag this shape to the center. Now let's just select this shape, make sure that we have no border and we just have a fill. Let's just make that light gray for now. Okay. So what we're going to do now is select this shape and go up to edit and select duplicate. And we're gonna change the width to 15. So let's type 15 in there and press enter. Now this is going to be our left margin. So we'll give this a fill, just a slightly different color for now. And then we're going to need to take this 15 pixel margin and add it to the right. So if we click and hold shift and alt, and we'll just drag, this will create a copy. So there we go, we have our site margins down these sides. What we can do now is we can click this 15 pixel margin, click that shape, go up to edit and duplicate that. And we're gonna set this one as 67.5 and this is going to be the width of our columns so we're going to make that black and then just drag that until it snaps in place right up against our left margin now we're going to select the black shape and again go up to edit down to duplicate we'll bring that out here and we're going to set the width of this to 30. Now this is going to be the gutter, that's the spacing in between each of the columns. And let's just give that a different shade of gray as well, just so we can see the different shapes that we're creating. And of course, we're going to line this up again with our black shape, just so everything snaps nicely in place. So now once you've done this, what we're going to do is left click on the black shape and then holding shift, left click on the gutter, that's this one here. So you should have these two both selected now. With them both selected, go over to repeat grid on the right hand side here and just click that. And you should see these green guides pop up. Now what this is going to do is take our column, that's the black shape, and then our gutter here, and it's going to repeat them across the entire width of the document. So let's click and drag from this big green anchor point. You should see that it starts to repeat out. And we want to drag this and snap it right up to the left hand side of the right margin like this. So you can see there, that blue line, that cyan colored line represents that it's snapping in place. Now at the moment, as it is, this doesn't all line up. This doesn't line up correctly. It's got this weird little kind of 10 pixel uh, kind of column here and we don't want that. So if we select this again, so you just have the green line around the edge to indicate that it's selected. And as you can see here, as I'm mousing in between each of these sections, it's showing me this pink guide. Now that is the spacing that it will automatically add between the shapes that we've copied across, that we've repeated across the page. So if we just click anywhere in this pink and drag to the left, it will automatically adjust all of them at once. And we want that to say zero. So we're removing the spacing that it's automatically added with the repeat grid tool. So with that set to zero, you should have something like that. 
So there is no spacing whatsoever. And we can now continue by dragging this right anchor point out to the edge and snapping it right there up against that left side of the right margin. And if you want to check if you've done this correctly, you can double click this column on the right and it should say as the width 67.5. If it does, congratulations, you've done that correctly. It took me a few goes to get this right and you have to make sure that you do everything in the right order to make it work properly. So we can just click out of that now. And now if we double click in here, so we've got this gutter column selected. So if we just change the color there, as you can see, because we've used the repeat grid tool, if we change the color on this first one here, these first two shapes, it will affect all of the other copies we've created. So let's just drag that to the left to make that white. It will affect all of the others. And what we can do is we can select these margins as well. So we'll select both of those margins and we can make those white as well. So you should be left with something that looks like this. And we can now just drag over absolutely everything, go up to object and group. So we'll group all of this together. And now the reason we made all of these columns black is because we can adjust the opacity over here in the right hand side in the appearance palette. And we can make it as clear and distinctive or as faint as we like. So for me personally, when I'm working on a design, I want this to be just visible so I can see the guides and I can line elements up to the guides, but I don't want them so visible that they distract when designing or they appear as part of the design. So personally, somewhere between five and 10% is something that I would recommend. I've got mine set to 5% here and I can go up to object and lock. So now this layer Although it can be selected when designing on top of this grid, you won't accidentally edit it. So we can now start creating shapes and effectively you can begin to design your website and just line everything up to these guides. And there we go. I hope that was helpful guys. That's how you can create a responsive grid in Adobe XD. So please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.